Hey, what's up? This is Chosen, and this video is going to be going over some of these new champions that are coming to the game via Doom Tower Fragments that are going to be acquired. Now, uh, we're going to be doing this a different way. I'm going to be interacting with the live chat and letting them grade the champions and then uh, letting the chat know if I agree with them or disagree with them. So it's just an interesting way to see these champions get graded uh, in terms of their kit. Now, full disclosure, it is tough to be super accurate because we don't fully understand the booking process, how that's going to change the debuff and buff chances. We don't know the multipliers, how hard they're going to be hitting. Uh, so certain things like that, the base stats, the base speed, lots of different things that can shift the grade of the champion. But just going over the kit potential in general, we're going to do our best to lay that out for you and then talk about the grades uh, that I kind of think they're going to fall in based on things being average and par for the course. Uh, if nothing crazy changes in terms of the stats and the booking process that we wouldn't expect. And then also worth noting that these champions are probably a, a, a while down the road. It's going to be a while until you earn enough fragments to actually get them on your roster. So uh, keep those uh, few things in context as you're watching this, but this is going to be a highlight of grading it live with chat. I hope you enjoy. Let's get into it. Okay, we're gonna go over. Uh, we're gonna go over all these new champions' kits, and we can uh, we can grade them together. I'll uh, I'll fire up a poll, and if you guys don't mind helping me out, throw a throw a throw your accurate vote in the poll, and we'll uh, we'll kind of see the general sentiment. We'll go over the kits and rate them together. All right, so we'll start with obviously the uh, the dark Kyle, as they're calling it, dark Kale. We've got attack one enemy three times. Triple hitter A1s are fun. Each hit with a 25% chance to instantly... Uh, the rough part is you can't see the books and stuff, but we'll try to guess. Each hit with a 25% chance to instantly activate two poisons. Or one poison and one HP burn. Instantly activate. So like a detonate mechanic there. Uh, then we've got to attack all enemies on the A2. I'm sure you can book that to a three turn cooldown. 75% chance, I'm sure you can book it to 100. Of placing the big version of Decrease Attack for two turns. Um, each crit can also increase the duration of all debuffs. Ooh. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. And then we've got Reality Acid. 75% chance, I'm sure you can book it to 100. Of Placing three five percent poisons and poison sensitivity. We don't have that very much in the game. There's only very few niche champions that do poison sensitivity. And then we got a passive decrease the crit rate of enemies under two or more poison debuffs by fifteen percent. Um, I think it should be crit rate and crit damage. Just do like ten crit damage or something, or just go ten and ten, ten crit rate and ten crit damage, but. If there are multiple champions on the team, only one only one passive will activate. Okay, so you can't put like three Kales or Dark Kales. Alright, so that is. Let's get your uh let's get your grade here. Alrighty, so the grades are looking pretty good on Dark Kale. I agree. Um I like Kale. Alright, I like Dark Kale. I think that'll be that'll be a fun champion. I'd probably go, yeah. A a S pretty good. I I agree with you there. It looks like the grade from the chat is an S minus. I agree. Pretty solid there. I like it. All right. So for Basatha, we've got an A one attack one enemy with a forty percent chance of placing the big decrease attack for two turns. That's cool. A one attack down is uh it's always handy. Then we get the A2, place 25% strength and, and continuous heal on all allies for two turns. If we can book that to a three turn cooldown, that's pretty good. Because it also places shield equal to this champion's HP on all allies. Oh, they have to be debuffed. Huh. Interesting. It's like a debuff counter to provide shield. Hmm. Okay. Um. And then we've got an AOE. I'm sure you can book that to a 100% chance of placing a stun. You can probably book that to 100% for one turn and decrease their turn meter. That's pretty good. AOE stun that decreases turn meter. 
That's pretty good. <laughs> That's... Yeah. Uh, whenever an enemy is revived, has a 75% chance of placing a stun on them for one turn. And it can't be resisted or blocked. Whenever they're revived, it's just going to stun them. You could probably book that to 100. Okay. Interesting. I'm sh Yeah, it doesn't say you can only uh, do on one enemy. So even if it is an AoE revive, it's pr it can probably proc multiple times. It doesn't say that it can't. So let's get your grade here. All right, so on Basatha, it looks like the grade is A minus. Um, I agree. I would say, yeah, A minus is fair. I, I, that's what I would put. That AOE stun is, uh, is really good. Strengthen is not a very common role in the game. Uh, the qualifier for the shield's a little bit rough, but might be broken if that qualifier wasn't there. So yeah, definitely gonna be really good. I like it. So that was Basatha. Now let's go to uh, Gwyneth. All right, Gwyneth. By the way, this is my first time going over these. Uh, like I'm reacting live just like you are. All right, Gwyneth. Infiltrator. Attack all enemies A1. I like that. Ah, I was right. I was right. She'll hit hard and hit fast. So fast that her enemies will have a tough time hitting back. I've always, uh, this champion's cool too. By the way, they threw in something like, uh, gonna be tough for enemies to hit back. I bet you this champion has some sort of mechanic like cancels out counterattacks. Like, can't be counterattacks, something like that. Just by them throwing in that little caveat, gonna be tough, uh, uh, gonna be tough for enemies to hit back. This attack will not trigger counterattacks. That's exactly what I said in the, uh, in their teaser video. I knew because they made a, they made a ran, they threw in a random comment like, this champion is so, uh, so good. It's going to be tough to counter them. And I was like, I bet you they're going to have some mechanic where they can't be counterattacked. So, okay. Interesting. Then we've got, um, attacks one enemy before attacking. Has an 80% chance. I bet you can book it to 100 of placing weak in. I bet that'll hit super hard. It's kind of like a Kutraxa ability. A single hitter places weak in. Heals a champion by 30% of the damage inflicted. Then heals uh, by any surplus heal. Okay. Transfers all debuffs from this champion onto one target enemy. Then attacks the enemy. Ignores 10% of the target's defense for each debuff they are under. Okay, so obviously... Uh, Going to be a damage dealer. With an AoE A1. I bet you they hit pretty hard. Five turn cooldown. If we can't book that to three, it's a little bit rough on the last ability there. But, okay. Let's get a poll going. All right, so it looks like the grade on Gwyneth is B minus. Um, yeah, I would probably go B. The problem with a champion like this is we don't know how hard they hit. We don't know their multipliers. So somewhere between B minus and B plus depending on the damage potential counterattack thing is super niche but yeah i tend to agree with you there a little bit all right let's go to uh taya all right so for taya we've got an a1 that attacks one enemy with a 50 percent chance of placing decrease accuracy for two turns Single target decrease accuracy is extremely niche. That should at least be a multi-hitter. Uh, could be good for boss fights, though, if you're building a resistance situation. Um, okay, and then the A2 is going to be a triple hitter. Each hit has a 70... Okay, triple hitter. I bet you can book that to 100, so lots of poisons. I'm sure that'll be a three-turn cooldown triple hitter that places a bunch of poison. Okay. Then the A3, single hitter. Oh, okay, we got more Poison Detonator. Uh, activating Poison and HP Burn. Also, 75% chance of placing a Heal Reduction for two turns. Okay. Um, Lots of Poisons. 
Yeah, I wish they did. I wish they did a better job uh, laying this out uh, and have like the affinity and the rarity and the. Uh... All right, so it looks like the grade for Taya comes out as a B minus. That's fair, I think. So based off of what we know, I think that's fair. I tend to agree with the uh, with the B minus. All right, Varl the Destroyer. Uh, a1 is going to be a single target and heals this champion by 30% damage inflicted. Okay. A2 is going to be an AoE. You can book to 100% chance of placing a big weaken. AoE weakens kind of rare. Um, also decrease attack on those enemies who receive a weaken. So AoE weaken and attack down. On a three turn cooldown, that's not bad. It's kind of uh, kind of a rare, uh, like AOE defense break seems a little bit more common than weaken. Uh, the A3 is gonna be a single target, ignore 30% of the target's defense. And then decrease target's max HP, there you go. Uh, we got a shield, or a scarab candidate. By 50% of the damage inflicted, that's pretty big. It's like a, it's like a free destroy set. Places a block damage buff on this champion for one turn if it kills an enemy. Okay. It probably hits decently hard, I bet. It's going to ignore defense, and because of the cooldown and the single hit, I bet it hits hard. I bet it's got a really good multiplier. Um, so that could be good for uh, lowering that Scarab's purple shield. Passive increase the champion's attack by 10% each time they use an active skill. Woof! Yeah, it could be... Um, because we've got A1 heals. Uh, could be really good for uh, for the for the Scarab. Doesn't do any self-shielding. Um, but could really be a damage dealer for the Scarab. And really help lower the average clear time of some Scarab uh, farming teams. Alright, so... Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's a good point. The uh, CVC ring. Yep, that's a good point. All right, so it looks like the grade here on Varl is coming out to A minus. Yeah, I'd say that's fair. A minus. Yeah, um, because it looks a little niche. It doesn't do any self shielding, but I think A minus is fair. It looks like looks like uh, got some potential in the right situation for sure. Um, and then I think we've got one more. Vassal the Seal. Vassal of the Seal. So we've got A1. Place HP burn on the target for two turns if they're under a true fear. That's a little bit rough. Oh, okay, good. Or decrease attack. Okay, good. I was going to say, you won't be able to do it in the clan boss because you can't fear the clan boss. But Or decrease attack, which is pretty common in the clan boss. So that's good. Also, shield, two turns equal to max HP. That's kind of cool for an A1. That that means you've got some soloing some stuff potential because of the self-shielding. Um, AoE prob probably books to a four-turn cooldown. AoE true fear and decrease attack. That's pretty good. Really good for waves. AoE true fear and decrease attack. That's a lot of CC and toughness. Pseudo toughness, because they're going to hit weaker. Um, then we've got kind of a Sinesha type build ability. Balance the HP of all allies. The HP levels of all allies will be brought up to the level with the highest HP. Oh, and an extra turn. That's cool. That's kind of like that Sinesha uh, HP. Yeah, and it's probably better because it, it tops up rather than equalize. And grants an extra turn. Then we got a passive. Receives 20% less damage from champions. Oh, we've got more of those mechanics. 20% less damage from banner lords, high elves, sacred. Okay. If there are two or more demon spawn champions, what? Come, what are we going here with these with these qualifiers? Oh, alongside this champion. Increase the crit damage of all demon spawn. By 20%. Interesting. Two or more demon spawn. 
Interesting. Okay. And then... Okay. Balance HP, extra turn, AoE True Fear, and... Okay. And then A1... HP burn. Okay. Alright. Let's see what you guys think here. Looks like the grade comes out to A+. So not quite S tier, but A+. I agree, but I mean, it's hard when we can't see the stats. We can't see the base speed. We can't see the books. So it could be anywhere from A- to S. But yeah, I'd say A+, is pretty fair. Um, also, yeah, because that A1 also places shield. So, yeah, I'd say A-plus is pretty fair. Definitely pretty solid. Alrighty, so that's going to do it for this one. Uh, let me know down below uh, if you agree with the grades, disagree. I really enjoy hearing your perspective as well if you take the time to let me know down below. So, uh, as always, thank you for watching. Have a good rest of your day. Peace.